Hi everyone, I want to talk about seizures disorder, but for now I will go over what I can define as general information. Seizures disorder, general info. We are going to define some terms. When you hear the word seizures, that is an excessive synchronous neuronal discharge and it takes place in the cerebral cortex. It is off and on kind of event and it lasts for seconds or few minutes. You heard the word convulsions. That is a sudden irregular limb or body movement. These is an involuntary muscle contraction that is secondary to brain problems like epilepsy, seizures, fever in children, electoral imbalance, and so on. Epilepsy, on the other hand, is a form of recurrent two episodes of unprovoked seizures, at least. 24 hours apart. There's possibility of stroke, traumatic brain injury, meningitis induced seizures if it is occurring within 10 years after one unprovoked seizures. It can be genetic in origin or we don't know the cause and we target it as idiopathic. It has lasting damaging effect on central nervous system, that is epilepsy. There's a scenario called infantile spasm. Spasm occurs in multiple fashions or clusters. Adduction of arms with full fleshing of head and trunk could be the presentation or it could be abduction of arms with backward extension of head and trunk. There's a scenario called simple seizures in the past. It is now called focused seizures without impairment of awareness. That is simple. When it is complex focal, it is called focused seizures with impaired awareness. Focal or partial seizures involves the alteration of electrical impulses in just one part of the brain. But we could have focal then becoming secondary generalized. That will include initial focal or partial, then later spreads to encompass the two hemispheres. That might be leading to generalized tonic clonic convulsions. That is now called focal seizures, evolving to bilateral tonic clonic seizures. It's possible we come across a term called generalized seizures. That will be a kind of widespread neuronal discharge with motor manifestations bilaterally. Awareness may be impaired and motor may be absent, as in case of absent seizures. In other words, absent seizures will be one of the generalized seizures with low amplitude myoclonic movement as well. It's also possible that we we'll have mild tonic movement of limbs and trunk or simple automatism. Still on times, you would have heard about the word grandma, not grandma or grandpa, grandma. That is a generalized tonic-clonic seizures, or it's just a description of a major motor seizures or convulsions. It's possible we come across the term subtle. Subtle in the sense that there is minimal clinical expressions or subclinical when there's no clinical or no outward manifestations 
of the electrical activities. Focus scissors are also called partial scissors. Formerly simple partial scissors now called focal scissors without impairment of awareness. The formerly known complex partial scissors is now called focal scissors with impaired awareness. The sensory focal could present in form of gustatory sensations, paresthesia, virago, olfactory sensations, auditory symptoms, flashing lights, or distortion of extremities. Let me go over that again. The sensory focal could present in form of gustatory sensation, whereby the individual is having a kind of strange taste, paresthesia, tingling, or all over, of a tiger that the ground is spinning around him or her, olfactory sensation, like sensing a kind of odor that no one else around could sense. Auditory symptoms, uh, hearing stuff that the rest could not, seeing flashing lights, or extremities are uh, distorted. Still on terms, could be static or atonic. When it's atonic, there will be sudden loss of muscle tone, and that could be in form of head nodding or if it's affecting the entire muscles, if it's generalized atonic condition, the individual will just drop. I mean, the individual will just fall down suddenly. That is called drop attack. Still on that, the lower limbs, atonic scissors will lead to collapsing to the ground when the two limbs suddenly becomes atonic. That means loss of muscle tone. It could be chronic. When it is chronic, it could be affecting the eyelids. The eyelids will be blinking repeatedly, or the limbs will just be jacking repeatedly. And the individual could later be having a tonic posturing, a kind of stiffness, and generalized jacking. The clinical situation is when the clinical features of these particular scissors are expressed. Remember we mentioned some clinical the other time when the features are not physically manifesting. Absent scissors is formerly known as petitma. It's going to present with staring. The affected individual will just stand still and gaze you know, at a direction with impaired consciousness. But it's not going to be for a long time, just for five to 10 seconds. It's associated with possible eye blinking and lip smacking. And the affected individual could have many episodes within one day. In myoclonic, that is going to be sudden and it's going to affect brief muscle contractions affecting the upper limbs or any group of muscles. Here, no impaired consciousness. Tonic, on the other hand, will involve muscle stiffness. The muscle will just become very stiff with impaired consciousness. Most of the time, that will be symmetrical posturing and could be asymmetrical posturing as well. Might be followed by generalized cloning or just have a focal activities. When it is followed by generalized cloning, we have what is called generalized toning cloning scissors or grandma. Toning cloning, that is tonic followed by clonic contractions. The first to occur will be turning face with stiffness of the muscles affected, and that is going to have short duration of time for just about 60 seconds. Then the cloning phase will follow, and that will involve the jacking of the affected 
muscle or the limbs or the entire body. It's possible the affected individual could have tongue biting, foley sputum, bloody sputum from the mouth, twisting can also occur. That's what we call restless leg syndrome. I decided to put this here so as to confuse some people or clarify issue. Restless leg syndrome is not a seizure disorder, particularly to those that are not doctors or nurses. Okay, when you have a relation who has restless leg syndrome, after listening to all my presentations on seizures, don't think you are making your own diagnosis to say, oh, he or she is having schizo disorder. No. Restless leg syndrome is an uncontrollable urge to move the lower limbs. Of course, mostly while resting after day's activities. There is usually an unpleasant sensation to move the lower limbs. It's worse at night because that is after the day's activities and improves with the leg movement. So, the affected individuals derive satisfaction or relief by moving the lower limbs. It's not a seizure disorder. I repeat, this is not a seizure disorder. Don't make that wrong diagnosis on your own. Let your doctor help you out. But when someone is having a restless leg syndrome, we need to check ferritin level. Anything below 50 microgram per liter is bad and that might lead to restless leg syndrome. Now ask me, what is the relationship of ferritin, the iron level, to restless leg syndrome? Wait till I'm going to make a separate presentation on restless leg syndrome. Okay, you can have a situation called Fazil. There is a sustained turning deviation of the eyes with its lateral turning of the head and rotation of the trunk is a kind of forceful and involuntary positioning of the eyes and the head. As likelihood of having behavioral situations associated with seizures. And that is going to be a sudden change in behavior without other clinical or classical features of seizures. For example, a child will just become unnecessarily quiet or less active, or sometimes I see that with flushing, pallor, anosis, or dizziness. Seizures could be unclassified, and it will become unclassified if it is either epileptic spasms that is generalized. So it's not generalized sonic cloning, it's just spasm. But it's caused by a focal lesion or generalized tonic cloning. However, when you have your EEG, CT, PET, MRI done, all will come back normal. So in that case, you've done everything. The features are like someone having tonic cloning seizures, but all the diagnostic investigations are pointing to nothing. Okay? Now, specific seizures disorders will follow in subsequent presentations. Thank you for listening. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get my presentations immediately they are published. Thank you. We have more to talk about. This is just the beginning of many videos on seizures disorder. So, don't turn off. Check for the next video.